grief is making your hair fall out and here's why now last year if you all have noticed i have been battling with hair fall and actually i had to let my sister cut off my ends because they were thinning out and my hair was just a mess y'all have seen how my ends were actually thinning and let me tell you i did everything right i doubled down on my hair care routine i was very adamant about it to taking in my vitamins taking in supplements getting back to eating healthy you name it basically but since i was dealing with stress um panic attacks and anxiety it's very much understandable because I was going through that. But however, one thing that I did not mention is that I was grieving. I was grieving the whole year. 2023 <laughs> was literally just my grieving year. Now, of course, the aftermath of that is hair fall. Now, thankfully, I had no problems in the hair growth department, but the hair fall was unexplainable just because I was like, okay, I'm no longer in that stressful situation, but I don't understand why the hair fall was still there but after being in therapy i realized it just clicked for me i was like wait since i know when i'm grieving i'm like let me research if there's a correlation to grief and hair loss here's what i found out okay let me read it to you <laughs> grief and emotional stress can contribute significantly to hair loss as both can lead to disruptions in body's natural balance when you go through grief or extreme emotional turmoil your body releases more stress hormones such as cortisol which can impact hair growth cycle in a few different ways of course number one first of all it's telogen effluvium now this is the most common form of stress induced hair loss now hair affected by the telogen effluvium typically falls out two to three months after the triggered event which in this case would be intense grief or stress not only that grief can actually trigger hormonal imbalance or autoimmune immune response let's say if you have alopecia if you undergo grief or great emotional distress you may experience like bald patches but for me as soon as i got over the grief and i got better i noticed that the hair fall also stopped the panic attack stopped the anxiety stopped i felt like all of those things were actually caused by it as well so right now if you are grieving or if you're in deep stress be kind and be very gentle with yourself because from personal experience there's no amount of you know just hair mask and doing all of these external stuff that can fix the i think the inside or the emotional turmoil that you're feeling on the inside one thing that i also learned is that you don't have to rush your healing and the only way to get over grief or to get through grief is to go through it there's actually no other way of um by by passing grief you have to pass all the stages of grief you have to allow yourself to do that and I noticed that for some people they tend to avoid grief you know like if you're avoiding grief you're just prolonging your suffering really which is understandable because I know that when you go through grief you actually have to deal with emotions and some people are very intimidated in feeling those emotions again and it seems like you're kind of like in a way reliving the, the trauma that you may have gone through so I really do suggest that you go to therapy to talk about it with a friend with a family member and most especially go to God. There's this verse in the Bible in Psalms, Psalms 34 verse 18 and 20. I'm just reading in the NIV version, okay? It says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in the spirit. And it says here, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones and not one of them will be broken. And just as a fact that nobody is going to understand you or what you're going through like the Lord does. You know, so if you're seeking for a comfort and someone to understand you, go to God because even in your grieving, know that he is for you. So even in your weakness, he is going to be your strength. You know, so you don't really have to be strong or pretend to be strong. Just because I feel like I did a lot of that like pretending to be strong last year and it just doesn't work that way. I really truly just found my rest entering the presence of god it's like there's no other so yeah it's a journey so allow your yourself to actually grieve it because unprocessed grief can really catch up with you later in life you can distract yourself you can avoid it now but somehow it will find its way back to you again and sometimes 
it actually manifests uh, in your body, like pains in your body. Before, I didn't actually believe because I was like, sure, you're right, like that's not it. But certain pains that you're feeling in your body actually can be caused by grief. You know, like the emotions that are trapped in your body, like it manifests in physical pain. Now, I know we're talking about hair loss, but this is a great way or signs to identify that you have unprocessed grief. Is Okay, so just let me read it. People with unprocessed grief might experience fatigue, headache, um, digestive issues, even hair loss due to prolonged stress. I feel like for the physical symptoms, when I was in my denial stage, I was definitely feeling all of these. But as soon as I processed the grief and I went through the stages of grief, like all of it were gone. It was like day and night. I remember telling my sister I was crying. I was basically an emotional mess and I, and I was wondering when would it get better and let me tell you it does get better it may take time you know but remember that you're just passing through this grief is not permanent if you don't make it permanent then the lord is there to help you move on whatever it is that you're going through the lord is going to restore back your joy and i and i'm believing that for you so that is it and i will see you in my next one bye <laughs>